Welcome back. Now we want to discuss something. I uh, want to have a hot to hot talk, if you know what I mean. A heartbreak is something uh, people, I, I won't say everyone, will probably encounter at least one time in their lifetime. But dealing with it uh, is where we might all have um, issues because we might not know how to handle it or people handle it in different ways. Now Priscilla is here to talk to us about how to deal with a heartbreak. Uh, she's a mental health expert and also um, talks to us about relationships and, and other things that uh, we deal with on a daily basis. Good to have you join us again. Good morning, Yomi. All right, so last week we talked about online dating. Oh, so yes. now uh, they've been dating for a week and now they've, they've <laughs> broken up. <laughs> so um, what's the first thing mm. that usually goes through the mind of a person once um, there's a situation where there's a heartbreak? Um, first of all, it depends on the intensity of the relationship yeah. and it depends on how much emotional investment that um, the individual has made into the relationship. That determines the intensity of pain mm. or hurt or, you know, uh, resentment that the person feels towards uh, the other person. Mm. Um, however, I think it's important for people to realize that when we talk about moving on, moving on is not leaving a relationship. Right. Separation, uh, breaking up, it's not, it's, not, um, it's not the solution to a pain. Because the reason people break, on, break up most of the time is because the other person probably has wronged them or probably they have in, in reconcil irreconcilable differences mm -hmm or uh, the fact that they feel they are not compatible yeah. in some... But mm -hmm. when people break up, one, part, one party is left hurting. Or both parties sometimes. Or both parties mm -hmm. sometimes, depending on the reason for the breakup. Yeah. So uh, people think, oh, I'm going to dump him, I'm going to dump her, and then that's, that means that I get better. No. Yeah. The fact that you... Because you have people who have been separated or uh, who've broken up for 10 years and are still nursing the heart. Yeah. Of, yeah. of breaking up. Yeah, so that's why I want to talk to, um, talk to someone out there now who's um, maybe going through a heartbreak. Maybe it's been a week mm. or a month and they're depressed, they're angry, they're resentful, whatever it is. What would you say to such a person uh, if, they were, if they decided today that they're going to move on? Okay, so um, I like the word move on because um, when we say moving on, it means that I am open again to trust, mm. to love, to forgive, now that word seems overly used yeah. when we talk about forgiveness. You, you cannot move on without forgiving. And mm. what really is forgiving? Forgiving is your ability to see that you are doing it for you because of the life that you still have ahead of you. Mm. I usually you would use this example. Two people are dating, two people are in a relationship. Um, one person chooses not to forgive the other mm. and get stuck. Um, usually, when you see someone you're not in good relationship with, naturally your heart palpitates because mm. you're, not in, you're not in talking terms and all of that. Yeah. So that continues, you know, regularly. And then you begin to have physical symptoms, mm. you know, of that of emotional pain, yeah. right? So if anybody is probably going to develop high blood pressure, it's going to be you. If anybody is going to develop a stroke, it's going to be you. If anybody will die as a result of the complication, it's going to be you. Well, how about and you who, are the one who is hurt. How about people who, who say that they put in so much in the relationship? Like, you know, when you have a vested interest. Oh, right. Maybe you invested money, time, effort, emotions, a lot of things into this relationship and here is this other person, either the guy or the girl, walking away from this entire thing. So you put all your eggs in a basket, so to speak, and then this person is walking away. It's harder to forgive in that situation. Bad investment. That's the way we should just say it. Bad investment. Because life itself is a risk. And the fact that that has happened is not to mean that, you know, there are no good things. In fact, you should see yourself that you're lucky to have found out on time mm. that this person is this way and this person is not deserving of this, uh, of this investment. Or sometimes it's not that the person is not deserving, but that the person is not in the right frame of mind to receive all that intensity that you're bringing into the relationship. Yeah. Sometimes they're even dealing with things that you cannot even uh, uh, understand. And I see that every relationship gives you an, uh, the ability to stretch more, to grow more, to become better. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that is just that relationship coming to play its part in your life by making you grow and stretch more. And we oftentimes say that when the mind is expanded to a level, it cannot go back to the original level that it was in. Right. So when you have been stretched, 
what happens is you get better, you get, you know, you, you get um, more stable and, you know, you get more emotionally mature. Yeah. So let's talk about, um, let's talk in practical terms. So on a daily basis, right. um, Usually, you, most people that, that I've spoken to would say it's uh, it's more intense when you wake up in the morning mm. because everything just comes flooding, flooding back, back, all the memories, everything. So how do I deal with these things on a daily basis uh, for the next few weeks, the next few months, uh, and even years? The first thing to do is to look through that relationship and say, what have I gained? It cannot always be that bad. A lot of times we box everything and say, oh, bad relationship. But no, that's not a healthy way to go about it. Mm. You must compartmentalize what area of this relationship was fantastic. And yeah. I'm choosing to hold on to that. What were the things I did? Because you cannot be the victim all of the time, irrespective of how we went down. You have a contribution to it. Yeah. What are the things I have learned from this relationship? What are the things I'm choosing to, you know, take on with me that I would not repeat in my next relationship mm -hmm. and all of that? So... To, to, to get better, to deal with it every day, is to pick up positive learnings mm. from what you have taken from that relationship and choose, okay, to be the better for it and not the worse for it. So that when the person sees you two months down the line, three months down the line, he's not going to be saying, oh, thank God I dumped him or thank God I dumped her. Exactly. Okay, so I, I like that. So let's then, we're talking about moving on. So on a daily basis, you're dealing with your own personal self and all of that. Getting to trust again, mm. getting to love again, getting to... Um, go into another relationship or, or something else, how do you then begin to engage and, and begin to let down your guard? Okay, um, first of all, letting down your guard means that you have believed that love truly still does exist. Mm -hmm. You have also believed that there are people worth your time, your love, your energy. That believing, first of all, is the way to go. Because if you're not able to believe, then it becomes difficult because your perception would determine your behavior. Mm. So if you perceive that love still truly does exist, then you move on. Trusting again, when you believe That's that... That's more difficult, though, oh, especially if, if something has it's happened It's more repeated. difficult when you, cl when you say to yourself that there's nobody to be trusted. Mm. That's why I said the window is, first of all, believing that trust people who are, who are deserving of your trust still does exist, or people who are deserving of your love still does exist. Mm. So when you believe that, then it gives you the, a wind of opportunity to open up your mind a bit, all right? And then you continue to test the waters. You then begin to learn. When, when I talked about learning from your mistakes initially, mm -hmm. that was what I meant. So when you say, okay, was it that we moved on too fast? Was it that we skipped the level? Like I said, the last time, relationships are, you, you move from unknown to known. Mm. An acquaintance, you move to friendship then we begin to know one another. Yeah. Then we begin to date. The fact that we're dating is not to mean that we're in an intimate relationship, right. meaning that I can date as many people as I can, mm. okay, just to be able to know them better. Mm. But a lot of times we skip that level, we move from friendship in, into a relationship, right. but we move from acquaintance to relationship. So you, so you, you can avoid some, some of these pitfalls. We can avoid these pitfalls because we're not, are we moving gradually? Did we rush things too fast? Mm. Were there signs that I neglected from the beginning? So loving again or trusting again gives you the opportunity to sit back, introspect and reflect to saying, okay, how did I miss the steps? How did I not see the danger signs? Was it that I allowed my emotion to, over, to override my reasoning? Mm. What, it's very important for you to sit and retrospect and you would find out totally that you ignored certain signs right. or you chose to overlook certain signs. Things you thought were not significant, then it means that they became significant. Right. Okay, so now, um, there's somebody watching right now and maybe the heartbreak or the breakup hit them really, really hard hmm. and it's caused depression. Hmm. which can be, you know, so maybe they're now stuck at home, they don't get out of bed, and they're just eating and eating and eating and eating. What would you say to such a person? And I know that that happens more with women and with girls mm. than with men. I know that men also get heartbreak, heartbroken. Right. But if, if you were talking to someone like that, what would you say? Okay, so first of all, I, I want to take out the word depression. Let's. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, <laughs> I want to take that because that that's an, another you know box. Another of, level. Yes, yeah. because a lot of people have self labeled themselves depressed when depression takes some you know professional uh, diagnosis. Yeah. Now let's say they, they then begin to continually feel sad. Yeah. That's 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 more like it. Mm -hmm. um, being in, in tune with your emotion is a skill knowing exactly that this is how I feel mm. and this is what I think is the reason for how I feel. 
Now, I said that the way you perceive things would determine the way you react. So your perception of things would determine, your perception of something would determine your interpretation of it. Mm. And your interpretation of it, so if you misinterpret it, you will misbehave. Right. right. You get it? Mm -hmm. So, um, getting out of that quagmire of deep or intense sadness is saying to yourself that, oh, the reason I feel this way is because I believe that this is the best thing that's happened to me and I am not deserving of anything better. Right. But when right. you see yourself deserving of something better still coming along the way, there's going to be a ray of hope mm. that, oh my goodness, somebody who is more deserving, somebody, and somebody, somebody that I would also treat better and I would also go in with the right frame of mind being more, is it that, okay, we didn't have some form of mental compatibility, mm -hmm. then I want to upscale to say, okay, I'm going to work better. Is it that I, I have not acquired some level of emotional stability yeah. and mental resilience? You know, you, all of those dynamics, you then say to yourself, it's usually about me. Nobody, okay, is responsible for leaving you in that state. Mm. You give them the power to keep you in that state. Wow. I would also want to round up by saying that for everything you feel, it, it requires your permission. Everything you feel requires your permission. If you feel sad, you have given the permission for that emotion to come in. Yeah. Every time you make that decision about a choice, that you, about something you want to feel, you have the window of opportunity to say, no, I'm not going to feel that way, or I'm going to feel this way. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Priscilla. I know that a lot of people have learned so much from uh, this heartbreak discussion that we had this morning. Yeah. And I uh, hope you get better, whoever you are listening out there.